So about a year ago, I had uh, purchased a couple of Cree LED uh, A socket replacement bulbs and installed them in my bathroom. And probably three months or so of operation, maybe five, hard to say, uh, both bulbs failed. And they failed with the classic flickering and then they just wouldn't do anything. So I kind of pulled those out and bought a couple of uh, Philips uh, first generation uh, LED A socket bulbs and installed them. And I haven't had any problems with those. Um, they've worked pretty reliably for me. So these sat on my bench for the past year and you know I thought I'd tear one apart just to see if I could recover the LED bulbs. But um, you know they sat and sat and finally I decided you know I'd smash one out today and and you know take it apart. So this is one of them that I haven't taken apart and here that looks better. Anyways it's one of them that I haven't smashed apart and I probably won't because after taking apart the first one um, I didn't see much point in bothering with this one. So, you know, it comes apart pretty easily, surprisingly. There's no potting material used in this at all. What you have is the A socket, the electronics, so this would be the um, AD, or AC to DC uh, conversion and then the current source for driving the LEDs. You have a tower that provides heat sinking. So this is like fairly heavy. You have a couple of contacts and then the corresponding spring contacts up here. And you have the LED uh, array. So this is a bunch of LEDs, I believe, just in series. I don't think they've broken it up into two groups and it's mounted on an IMS uh, material so that's uh, insulated metal substrate so you have the aluminum as a backer with an insulation and then the copper traces on top and I'll be showing some pictures of what that kind of looks like where each of these little folds are um, you know while I'm doing this so the design itself I think is pretty good from a, a mechanical assembly point of view um, just for ease of manufacturing. Uh, this little board, so the, the little current source board, literally just slides down. Um, I think it goes like this. So this, there's there are actual slots in there for this. And if I get it right in here. <laughs> And it just slides down and the little wire goes out here they solder it in place there's another wire here that gets soldered onto the side so that makes the neutral and hot connections um, they've got a 500 milliamp fuse in here surface mount fuse uh, i think it's a, an st um, controller big inductor for the, uh, the actual current source uh, you know some filter caps electrolytics <clears throat> and with the tower, so when this is actually inserted in the A socket, the tower part, um, you can see there's a little slot for the board would come in, and I believe it's just, here we go, so it just fits in and the springs make contacts to the positive and negative terminals of the current source. So for the tower, they have a little uh, PCB assembly um, that kind of brings the current source up to the top here with two spring clips and these uh, spring clips um, the tower has the IMS uh, LED string um, literally just slide on top of the tower now I'm not sure if I got it right here there we go so we can actually see um, the points at which, so there's the contact and the contact. So this is going to get pushed all the way down to make contact to uh, the IMS uh, PCB. And then that makes your contact for your string. So where things fall apart is that none of this is sealed against moisture. 
and because it's not sealed against moisture, um, if there's any um, uh, bimetallic um, interfaces in here, uh, that'll be uh, affected by the moisture and the electricity that's flowing through that area. Um, so when they bent this this up, so I, I think it's it's a cool way of doing it, but um, the problem with it that I see is that when they bent it up, uh, each of the bends creates a stress fracture and then exposes copper over time as this thing heats and cools. And um, I think you end up getting uh, dendrite growth in there of some, I'm not sure what the, uh, the formation is, but um, you can see in the pictures as I'm doing this uh, on the side that uh, it actually is um, growing in between the cracks. Let's see if we can get a shot here. Yeah. It's growing in the cracks um, of the, uh, the solder mask that's uh, present. So uh, as I said, I, I think it's it's uh, mechanically uh, not a bad little design for for quick uh, manufacturing, but you know, as for anything outside of really simple usage, like you know, the light bulb in your in your living room um, where it sees no moisture, uh, it's it's bad design for anything that's got rougher uh, environmentals. So outside usage, um, anything that's got vibration, so you'd never use one of these on your um, uh, garage door opener just because these leads are all failure points. And, you know, if things are bouncing around, like they put capped on tape around here, probably trying to keep it from shorting out the cap because uh, the inductor is like sitting right below it in its through hole. And this cap would sit there and it would just rub until it ate its way through the vinyl coating of the, uh, the outside of the cap. And the outside of the cap's ground, so that provide a spark show probably if it actually failed. Um, <clears throat> So vibration, bad, very bad in general. Um, they could probably help remedy some of that by putting silicon down or potting it, but then you still have the fundamental problem that it's not sealed against moisture. So, so as, as a recommendation, I'd say stay away from creep for anything where there's a lot of uh, moisture or a lot of vibration because the product will fail quickly and you'll end up spending a lot more money replacing it. So thanks for watching and uh, you know, hopefully uh, you can use the Cree product in, in situations where you know, it's beneficial because it is a lower cost product.